All right, so hi, this is Starkey Sowers. Welcome again to another Nutrition Mission podcast with Clark's Nutrition and Natural Foods Market. I've got Jessica Q with me. Yes, hey everyone, um, how's it going? We're hanging in the store. I told you what we're doing on the podcast. And you go, I'm interested in that. So I'm like, Let's well, then this. you need to be on my podcast. Yes, right? and I'm here. <laughs> all right. So, all right, so we're talking about sun bumming it, right? So yes. the lustrous tan. Oh. The right? Tan. The tan. It changes though as you get older. It's, it's Yeah, your uh, thinking kind of changes, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, you had oh. asked me in the story, you said, you know, what do you think about, you know, sun, sun damage or tanning? And, you know, the first thing I said was, I used to love it. You know, right. in my 20s, I would get this beautiful golden tan. And now. And you got the perfect skin for that perfect golden tan, right? Yeah. Of course, I have that more wet or white skin. And, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little harder to tan that stuff up. Yeah. Right? But still, I went after the illustrious tan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah. let's, I, I wrote some notes, so you got to bear with me. When I, got, I think these notes are critical, okay? okay. All right, All right. Okay. so the history of the tan. Okay. Mind you, this is my rendition and my extrapolation of many things, okay? okay. All right. <laughs> so the Egyptian kings were crowned sons of the sun. Okay. That's how important the sun was, okay? Yeah. Greek physician surgeons actually... Uh, believe that the bodies became stronger when you were exposed to the sun on an out, uh, outside and the sun on a regular basis. I'm sorry for this, but here it comes. That's the reason why the athletes in Greek times competed naked. No. Yes. Because they, they oh thought goodness. it was stronger. All right. Could you see American football players playing with, you know, no, no, no. <laughs> no. Uh, so <laughs> then the pre 1900s, 10 was considered to be like serfdom. And by, by the way, this probably was in the 1600s, 15, 16, 17. So uh, what's serfdom? What's that mean? I yeah. Don't know. Serfdom means that you're like working in the fields all day. You're like a surf. You're a slave. You're oh. a servant, not surf Got like it. in beach surf mm -hmm. tan. Like okay, oh like my god, look at that guy. He's tan. Oh, he must be a surf. Oh, dumb. he must be like he must yeah, work he works hard. outside. Oh, he's like gosh. a construction worker, yes, no, like a nobody, like right? Yeah. So I it was see. cool to be pale. And so, so the what lighter they, you were, yeah, most likely the more money you oh, had. Oh, more money you had. The, okay. Yeah, right. So they used to bloodlet and leech themselves to look more opaque and pale. No. And then they would use dangerous different types of compounds externally to basically get rid of it, a tan. So they use wow. like bleaching agents and things like that. Well, I, I that mean, was caustic. Well, I'm, I'm going to bring up this name because you say bleaching skin, but Michael Jackson didn't. There was right? so much speculations on him and his skin and how he went from one color to another. And yeah. I mean, he was so, doing something too, right? Yeah, he's doing like these uh -huh. different type of bleaching compounds and stuff like that. Yeah. So who turns it around but Coco Chanel? Coco Chanel. Coco Chanel turns around. She takes off pre-World War II. She's like 1920s. She ultimately goes to like France and she comes back with a tan. And it literally catapults the United States into tandem. Into tandem. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right. So this trend like gets set. It's like, oh my God, look how healthy she looks. She looks amazing. And so the darker skin, that looks better. Anybody that's got a tan, you got to have a tan. Yeah. You know, do the deal, blah, 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 stuff like that, right? So, so it becomes, it's not a fad, it's a trend. Right. So think about this. Think about like some of the old 1900 photos, you know, like people at the beach and they had like, you know, almost like, Almost like pajamas on. Yeah, they were the like the big. Right. Uh, they were like pretty big around their legs. Yeah. And then it like scrunched up a little bit. It yeah. Was like pajamas. Yeah. yeah it's like pajamas. The they put pajamas. a big hat on and all this stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so they and ultimately there's different types of cultures that had all sorts of different types of things that they would do for to prevent sunburn. Okay, so like for instance, the Tibetans, the Tibetans would take like black tea and then coat their skin with black tea. Oh. Other different, like the Indians would paint themselves with different stuff before they went out and worked out in the outside all day long so they wouldn't to get sunburned to oh. protect themselves. Oh. So people used protection before. It wasn't just like sunscreens of today. Mm -hmm. it was, they actually used things back in those days. Clothing and yeah. stuff like that. You know, and like I said, then Coco Chanel literally like changes the American landscape and everyone had to have the illustrious tan, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, so we go through this moment like the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. And so by the 60s, in fact, let me just check my notes here real quick. I just want to just check something here. I'm pretty sure it was like, yeah. So I think it was like roughly about the 1970s. Sunscreen ends up becoming a literally drug facts product. Okay. So what you'll notice, we got some sunscreens, right? Yes. Okay. 
So here's the sunscreen right here. And what does it say at the top? So it says drug facts. Drug facts. It's an so over-the-counter drug. drug. Wow. Okay, so it's regulated to the point because a lot of, so for instance, like if we take cocoa butter, all right, and you just put on cocoa butter. By the way, I've done the, all these experiments, okay, just because, you know, it had to be done, right? So take cocoa butter, right? Put it on and actually lay out with cocoa butter. So natural cocoa butter has an SPF of like four or five. Oh, does it? Yeah, but what you gotta apply oil? it. Coconut oil? Coconut oil has got a, thing? A, a smaller, but the cocoa okay. butter's a little harder. I've done the coconut oil. Yeah, and the coconut oil works because it reflects it and it sends mm. it back, right? Coconut oil, coconut butter combination. Ultimately, I end up in a situation when I was using it, I didn't burn, but I had to put it on like every hour. Okay. Okay? No one's gonna do that. No. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. By the way, I'm sure if I, you know, I still end up getting sun, sun damage from uh -huh. it. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but I didn't okay. get a sun burn. All right. Okay. Okay. So today we end up with all these suntans, but before we get that far, okay, let's continue to talk about the healthy benefits of the sun. Mm -hmm. I think it's critical. I've got all these notes. Before the cornflake was invented. The what? Cornflake. Cornflake? Cornflake. Dr. William Kellogg, as in Kellogg's cornflakes, oh, okay. uh -huh. gets literally... Uh, he invents what is known as the incandescent light bulb to actually put heat and kind of give you a suntan indoors. The tanning bed. The tanning bed born, born by Dr. But Kellogg. Kellogg, no way. Yes. All right, so he used it on King Edward VII, and he used it specifically in the Birmingham Palace to help get rid of his gout. Okay. All right. So we know sun has benefits. So I thought, what the okay. heck? I know some benefits, but let me just go see what PubMed says. Or actually, I did this on, on WebMD. WebMD. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. First of all, they talk about skin types. We're going to talk about that. Individuals with type one, which is like somebody that gets burned instantly. Uh -huh. They recommend only like five or 10 minutes a day. Okay. Type two, you get like maybe 10, 15 minutes a day. So my skin's like a type two. You're right? type two, okay. So then like yours is like a type three, your darker complexion. You can sit out sun a long time before you get burned. Yeah. So as a type three, you get 20, 30 minutes, 20 some odd minutes a day. Okay. At healthy exposure, okay? Okay. All right? So then if you're a type four, then you get maybe more than that, all right? Okay. Just depending on the situation. All right. 70% of Americans are vitamin D deficient. Where do you get vitamin D? The sun. Right? And so what do we do when we go outside and get in the sun? We put sunblock and sunscreen. we put hats on and we try right. to cover our bodies. Cover so our bodies up. Them. We're back to the 1900s, right? Yeah. And so guess what? You're not going to synthesize sun of a vitamin D from the sun if you're putting on sun tanning lotion. Mm -hmm. If you're like putting on these, all, all, you know, if you're laying under the umbrella, all these different things. Uh -huh. It doesn't happen. And then when you hit 50, the ability to synthesize vitamin D becomes less and less and less and less. Oh, wow. So you're probably going to have to supplement or eat it. Well, the problem is most Americans don't eat organ meats anymore. No. Right? right? So you're probably going to have to supplement, all right? So mm -hmm. get checked on the vitamin D. All right, and let's keep rolling, all right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So lack of sunlight linked to autoimmune diseases. Really? Yes. Number one. Number two, prostate cancer. Oh, wow. Okay. And by the way, vitamin D is linked in there as well. They know it's a vitamin D linked to those situations. Uh -huh. All right? Better sleep with getting morning exposure to sun for 20 to 30 minutes, which means like take a walk uh -huh. for 20 or 30 minutes. You're going to sleep better. Pretty cool, right? But, but in the sun, of course. Yeah, you like, got to be outside. Walk and get sun. Yeah, go okay. outside, get outside, get out of the Xbox better. world or wherever you're at, you know, and, yeah. and go outside. All right. Believe it or not, this is going to like backflip most people. If you get those 20 to 30 minute exposure outside, Okay. And what I'm saying is you, you're just going outside to get sunlight. Uh -huh. I'm not saying that you're getting sun exposure. You should get some sun exposure for health benefits, right? Uh -huh. Obviously you don't want, obviously also you don't want to be stupid. If you've got skin cancers in the family, things of that nature, talk to your doctor and see what makes sense, yes, right? You might be better off not getting any sun exposure without any type of like some type of protection mm -hmm. and just take the vitamin D, right? All right. right. So anyways, here's what we know is fat uh, cells actually shrink when you get 20 to 30 minutes of sun exposure before noon. And now mind you, I didn't say that you're laying out, you're just going out for that walk. So now all of a sudden, the walk's a benefit for health as far as keeping the body fat down. Yeah. But now actually fat cells might, Shrink. and mind you, this is WebMD, okay? <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, so 
Research. I'm in awe right now. <laughs> research definitely says there's three different types of skin cancers, melanoma, basal cell carcinoma, and squamous cell. And there are other different things that are there. So what does the sun do? Why is it so damaging, right? You have UVA and you have UV, UVB light waves that come off of the sun, uh -huh. okay? So, the UV, so they call them ultraviolet radiations, right? So the UVAs typically, so the UVB, by the way, are the topical damaging ones. To, okay, to the UVB is the yeah, ones that just, are for a top. Okay. Yeah, they get to the, to the skin. And that's why the suntan beds are UVBs, right? The okay. UVAs penetrate deep and they get down into the DNA, damage down at the core of the cell of the body. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. so that's the big thing that we have to watch out for. All right, so sun's important. Sun has benefits, uh -huh. but oh my gosh, you know, we got to be careful too, yes, right? Yes, yes. All right. So let's talk about sun protection. Okay. So we did a little bit of information about suntan screens, obviously. Mm -hmm. So for years, they had different compounds that were in there that actually ended up being more of a problem than they actually were a benefit. In the 70s, when I was a kid, it was PABA. Everyone should use PABA which is a B vitamin. We uh -huh. used to take PABA before we'd go lay out in the sun we took, to prevent ourselves from getting burned. We took uh -huh. PABA lotion and sma smeared our bodies with it. Uh -huh. We come out later, find out that PABA actually caused skin cancer. Oh my goodness. All right? Where, right. Was, where was the FDA at well, this everyone time? Thought it, everyone thought it was safe, <laughs> yeah. right? The FDA did too. And all of a sudden yeah. it started popping. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, wow. this ends up being a problem, right? So now there's different types of suntan lotions. They have different types that either reflect it and prevent you from absorbing the sun weight lengths or it absorbs it and prevents it from getting into the skin. Okay. Okay. So I brought up a couple ones. And so there's some different names that are on here. So this one is zinc oxide and titanium oxide. What do you know about that kind of compound? I don't know anything about that. Okay. I mean, zinc, zinc, so we know, the it's zinc like, that's oxide. a vitamin, right? So no, zinc's a mineral, right? So if mineral, you take the yeah. zinc, remember the zinc cream, you put it on your nose and it's all white? Yeah. Wait, and then they color it and you've got like blues or reds and different things like that. So no, I don't I, know that. What oh yeah. It? So that's like an Oz, Australian guy came up with this and he started using it for all his surfing buddies. And oh. by the way, the zinc oxide goes back to the fifties. All the surfer guys, all the guys that were lifeguards painted their nose with zinc oxide for lack of baby, uh, better terms. It's baby diaper uh, or baby rash uh, for the butt stuff. Right. Put on your face. Yeah, okay, right. So okay. you put it on your did face. You used to, did you start oh, yeah. when you surfed? Oh yeah. Okay. All the time. And I got the colored stuff. Because I wanted my kids to see me when I was out in this. Oh, okay. out there. Like, there's there's my dad. He's got the you know pink face, yeah, and exactly. blue face, and stuff like that. All right, all right. So ultimately, so if I'm I'm gonna crank this up, and so by the way, I've got these up here. These are some of my favorites. Uh -huh. This is Derma E Alba. Okay, this is a fun one. Yeah. So then this I one, have this you like one. the Alba. Okay. Mm -hmm. like so Alba. this one ends up having a bunch of different chemicals in them. By the way, everything that we sell in the store is non-toxic. Some of the chemicals actually can cause different types of complications, and possibly like maybe estrogen mimicking situations oh wow yeah it's kind of weird right and then some of the chemicals are not safe for the reef really yeah it kills co a coral from being able to grow oh no so what you'll notice on here Does this is skin ca you know the obviously recommendation active and then at the same time reef safe to prevent reef, re reef friendly That's and cruelty awesome. free Who thought? i don't think uh, maybe not too many people that you don't think about that do yeah, you yeah no Reef friendly and cruelty free. Very right. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah, this is my cool. favorite. You have this one, right? Mm -hmm, I you do. Have the, you have the one that's coconut oil based, right? Yes, it's the same exact one. Okay. Yes. And in my opinion, this is like I one got of it my at Clark's. Got it at Clark's. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite ones. But this is what I love about it. Okay. You take this and you spray it on. Yes. Okay, and it looks amazing. Right. Yeah. Looks cool. Right. Yeah. And I just got like you look fifty. Like you're glowing By now. the way, if I do fifty, am I good for the whole day? No. I can just. And this is one of the problems that's happening was this. We know when people start using sunscreens, skin cancers have actually gone up. Oh, why is that? Well, it could be for a couple different reasons. Number one, it could be because some of the chemical compounds originally maybe weren't decently safe. Mm. All right? Mm -hmm. So the other complication that it could be as well, too, is ultimately people spray on 50 and they go, I'm good. I can do 16 hours now in the sun. No. Isn't it? Are, are but you, that's the thinking. Yeah. So I did my one application and I'm good to go for the right. day. You have to apply multiple times, like every couple hours. Yeah, like it? every 15, 20 minutes if you're in the water, <laughs> if you're right? If you're in the water, and so yeah. So then, like, you still should sit underneath an umbrella. You should, you know, you still should still protect yourself, right? Right. Right. So just because we have suntan lotion doesn't guarantee us that we can, like, 
you know, do whatever we want to do now, right? Right. right. And that was kind of the belief when suntan lotion first started coming out, like in the seventies. Oh, when I was safe. a kid, it was like, hey, we're good. I put on seventy, my day's good. Doesn't Your day, mean, right? even though you didn't get sunburn with the UVBs on the topical area, the UVA still went deep down into the skin. Oh wow. Right? Yeah. All right, so now let's do the zinc and the titanium. Okay. Right? So, so here we go. Let's pop it over. I'm going to try some too so I can see. Oh, yeah. You, so you really want to try this You can probably one. see it better on my, my arm. Because you want to see not, this you're one, not, right? I'm not as hairy as you. But look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, there's a difference. I mean, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, you're not oh. as hairy as I am, but good, <laughs> look what happened to you. <laughs> okay. All right, you can take this stuff, you can slather it on, you can like rub it in. I hate this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay, mind you, mind, this reflects the sun. It's a very safe, non-chemical way of doing these. A lot yeah. of these things are different types of derivatives. In fact, I'll talk about the derivatives. Octocrylene, by the way, these are the safest absorbable ones. Octocrylene, uh -huh. avenobenzoine, and then octisalates. Avenobenzoin is another one that uh, benzoate. So those are the safest. Those are the safest ones that you can actually get. And those are the okay. ones that are actually in here. So. In here. Yeah. In the Alba. So I usually prefer this yeah. versus that. Yeah. yeah. I'm hairy. Because that I'm one. hairy everywhere. <laughs> and not only does but it look weird. But now you look like a snowman. A hairy like a snowman. snowman. <laughs> and I'm at the beach. <laughs> hairy snowman at the beach. All right. Everyone's got a kick out of this That's one. so funny. So my wife, by the way, has dealt with cancer for a long period of time. And she's got some skin cancer issues as well, too. And so ultimately, she wanted a type of product that she could use. Let's hit this one. This a one. moisturizer. Oh. Hydrating broad spectrum sunblock. Oh wow! That she can use and not, and then use makeup behind it. Yes, exactly. So this is actually something um, that I recently have uh, started using in my daily routine. Right. When I get ready in the morning, and it's putting a moisturizer that has the SPF, which I've never done before because right. I never noticed anything with my skin up until so literally the past year. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, Kay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it white? It's white. Okay, so hold on a second. And you have like a dot right here. Dot third there, eye. <laughs> right? There you go, it's gone now. Is it starting to absorb in? Kind of. A little bit. Actually, ironically speaking, as the time goes on, you'll watch. This one actually absorbs in. Okay. So it makes it a great product. Okay. Okay. The rest of them are probably going to hang around with you. Like that, yeah. Like that. <laughs> All right, so it kind of gives you a little difference to know when you're going out to buy one. You so want one that's going to be reef safe. You also want to want to know whether you're going to get one that's going to reflect the sun, which is going to be the, the zincs and the titaniums, uh -huh. or whether it's going to be the other compounds that are going to absorb the sunlight. All right. Now, now, because now, there's one that... Is, okay, so the difference in these two that are on your arms yep. is that one absorbs or stays on the top. It's like a layer, and then one is absorbing into they the stand, skin. They both stay on the layer, Okay, right? they're both layers. So one's going to absorb the UVBs and the UVAs uh -huh. and actually kind of like nesticize them. Uh -huh. The other one's going to block them and send them back. Got it. Okay. So it doesn't make a difference that one is white on you, you know, that's the making your skin white? The white one is the one that's blocking it. Gotcha. Okay. The one that's absorbing is going to be the clear one. Okay. So it is. Now, do you feel like one of these is going to provide better results? It's interesting because th what happens is I've used them both, and they also they both seem to work just as well. Okay. Once again, the FDA started regulating the manufacturing of these things, mm -hmm. making sure if they actually say what they do, they actually do what they do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. So now. You've got sunlight coming in. You're using, you know, let's say you're using some type of sun protection, whatever the case might be. But what can we do internally on a regular basis to actually prevent the DNA of our bodies from being damaged? Okay, recent information comes out. 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. 1,000 I use of vitamin E a day. Just keep that in your like multi-world or whatever that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Actually prevents the sunlight from damaging the DNA. Oh, wow. Critically Cool, right? That's huge. Huge. Now let's talk about food stuff. Lycopene, right? Supplemental lycopene, by the way, very effective in helping to absorb sunlight at the skin level, prevent it from damaging the DNA. Found in tomatoes. Not eating tomatoes? Take some lycopene. I take lycopene. Okay. All right? Yams, purple compounds in there. 
blueberries, colors that are in foods. Fruits, vegetables have what we call ORAC capacity, oxygen radical absorbing capacity. Okay. So you're using Paradise Herbs greens, right? Uh -huh. It's ORAC greens is what that is. Mm -hmm. And it's got all sorts of ORAC compounds in there that actually helps to protect the DNA from the skin damage. So eating fruits and vegetables becomes critical. Okay? Very critical moment. Very Recent good. information, niacinamide. So here's what's weird is this. Ultimately, when the skin hits the cells, or if when the sun hits the skin cells, it actually disrupts the metabolism of the energy-producing components in the cell itself, called mm -hmm. ATP. Seems that niacinamide, and by the way, that's where the damage starts. Okay. So niacinamide seems to actually help to prevent that from happening. Oh, wow. Really cool. You're going to get sun exposure. Niacinamide ends up being a component to use as well. Aztaxanthin. Oh. Ever eat salmon? That pink compound? Uh-huh. Aztaxanthin. Why don't fish get sunburn? Because they have aztaxanthin. Really? Okay. Eating aztaxanthin on a regular basis is actually very beneficial for helping to prevent... Where do you get this... Salad Clark's Nutrition. But ah, <laughs> I know. You're saw funny. that commercial. That's a good yeah. one. That's a good one. But I mean, like, where does this vitamin come from? Yeah, or so it's it's is it a vitamin or mineral? It's, no, it's a nutraceutical, which means it's not a vitamin, it's not a mineral, it's okay. not a protein. It's like a component that we find in food okay. that has actually benefits for different reasons. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so so Aztaxanthin is great for, believe it or not, it's great for uh, ocular, um, for the eyes actually oh. prevent macular degeneration. Oh. The other thing is really cool for as well too. It's very beneficial obviously at the skin level and you'll see what it says on the front. It's kind of a cool one. It says supports immune skin and eye health. And eye health, yeah, I saw that, yeah. So the other thing that's cool about it, believe it or not, it's actually good for endurance and stamina. Oh wow. Yeah. All right, endurance so let's talk stamina. about this. You okay. go lay out in the sun and you literally, by the way, I've staged your day. Okay. <laughs> so you literally get off, you know, the beach or whatever you're doing and your skin just feels, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's, you've been out in the sun, right? Yeah. 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 Sometimes it so, hurts a little. You know, sometimes or, it hurts a little yeah. bit and stuff like yeah. that. So there's what is known as NAPCA and we're going to do this. So give me your uh -huh. left hand here. Okay. We're going to spray this on. Your body produces NAPCA. So I want you to take your right hand and just kind of pat it like, like this right here. We're going to let it soak in and we're going to kind of come to the end of it. Right. Okay. But what you do is this actually helps to hydrate the skin, okay? So you can spray it on the skin afterwards. You spray it during it. It's a great rehydrator. works amazing, okay? okay? can be used topically over makeup, before makeup, things of that nature. One of my favorite things to use post-sun exposure is aloe. Aloe has what is known as mucopolysaccharides. Uh -huh. They're extremely beneficial and extremely healing on the skin. A lot of the aloe that you'll buy in the store when they say for sunburn, it's going to have a component of like lidocaine or something like that uh -huh. that actually helps oh. to get rid of the pain. Oh, the pain. This, but still, if you're not going to use that, a good straight aloe, and this is a gel, so they've added nice. some things to thicken it, works amazing. Yeah, nice. So feels, here's an aloe that's... Feels good. Yeah, that feels good. But here's like an aloe that's not been jellied up, okay, so mm -hmm. to speak, and you could use this, and it works amazing. And that gel is like a, a carrageenan. It's a seaweed they put in there. Oh. And this one's got a little bit in it, but it's a little more watery, and you'll notice... It's got a little more watery texture okay. to it. Okay. It's not quite as sticky, but it stuff oh, yeah. is amazing. Uh -huh, yeah. uh, the aloe life, in my opinion, it definitely is probably, feels a little different. but it smells different. Smell it. it doesn't, it's got oh, like yeah. an odor. It smells yeah. like aloe. Yeah. A very healing aloe. If you, you want a healing aloe, this is like the best healing aloe you can get your hands on. Okay. If you can't tolerate that, the cream that she makes, her name is Karen Matheson. Uh -huh. She makes some of the best aloe in the world. So this cream not Ooh, only smells, smells wonderful, smells amazing. feels amazing. It feels really great yeah. on the skin. Wow. It feel, and it's like 80% aloe. Okay. So it's a great way to use it. It's her hand and body cream stuff. It's amazing stuff. So post sun, the NAPCA for hydration, mm -hmm. as well as the aloe, you can't beat it. It helps to soothe irritated mucous membranes. It doesn't carry the drug facts that a lot of the ones in the grocery stores do, but I still would encourage that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very nice. All right. So now let's talk about damaged skin. Yeah. So now you've ha you have the damaged skin. So let's clear it the plate damaged. here. Let's get stuff out of the way. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about damaged skin stuff, right? Okay. So we're going to bring up the next plate here. 
So we've got the protection internally, externally, and now we're going to talk about damaged skin. Okay. Okay. So a couple of my favorite products that we have is this. Pranarom's like, in my opinion, probably one of the best companies when it comes to specifically making essential oils. Okay. One thing we know about rejuvenation and like helping to like even the skin tone is rose. Rose oil is like critical. Oh. One ounce of ro- one milliliter of rose oil is thirty bucks. Wow! It's just drops. Wow! We sell yeah. it in the store. The little container is like tiny. Wow! It's like the, about the size of a number two uh, pencil eraser. Oh my goodness! Okay. Blended together, rose regenerative oil. Okay. okay. Ends up being regenerated. Oh. This obviously they use the typical carry oil in this situation. I think yeah, they're using lavender. But they also use rose hip seed oil. Uh-huh. What's rose hip seed oil? It's not rose oil. It's rose hip seed. It's a specific plant that grows like in Africa and a couple other different places. Uh-huh. And it's very rich in vitamin C and it's very rejuvenating on skin tissue. There's all sorts of before and after pictures of people with damaged skin that use rose hip seed oil. And it, and it, yeah, I mean, it helps to regenerate it, the collagen and strengthen the collagen and make it work better uh-huh. and actually kind of slowly but surely help to make things come together. So helichrysum, another essential oil, which is great for scarring, carrot seed oil. By the way, carrot oil, carrot seed oil used to be a couple companies that made like different types of um, sunscreen protectors that had that in it. It's uh-huh. really healing uh-huh. on the skin. And then also neroli, Cleopatra's secret for like cell and skin beauty and that was cleopatra's that was her secret so i know sometimes all blended together yeah so this is all ready to go this is all blended but is this safe to put directly on your skin or do you have to because you know how some essential oils you do have to use a carrier oil and that's what they use they use for this carrier oil lavender so which of course lavender is healing on the skin and calming you take a couple drops literally on top of the skin across the face Stuff smells. I have makeup on. So I just yeah, <laughs> no, it does. <laughs> Works amazing, right? Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, this by itself is a great agent. How like how often would you put that on? I'm gonna try. First thing in it. the morning, maybe at night, uh-huh. once a day. And just like one drop and just, just kind of one or two in. drops. It goes a long way. So now let's take that formula with a bunch of other formulas that they've put together carrier oils, mm-hmm. and they came out with what is called Glow. Ooh, and that's by the company that makes essential oils. (gasps) Same company that makes the rose regenerative, and some of the compounds are in here as well, including the rose hip seed oil. This ends up being my wife's favorite. Yeah, it's like looks very cosmetic, famous, famous like (laughs) classy look, right? Totally classy, yeah, yeah. All right, so ultimately, this also ends up having camellia oil, which is another oil that helps to rejuvenate and strengthen collagen. Stuff's amazing stuff. Wow. So when it comes to aging skin and preventing aging skin, I think those things are two, two of them that are on the top of the list. Okay. Okay. They also carry a scar rescue formula. Okay. okay. And so finally, so some scar. people want to whiten some areas Yeah. when it comes to aging skin. Vitamin C yes. serum is amazing for that. To lighten the skin. Yep, kind of help to even it out. Even it out. And then also for any type of skin that's like maybe sun damaged and maybe sagging like mine, Mm -hmm. right? Stop it. Ageless skin. (laughs) So this this tightens the skin. This is the old Dr. Paracone formula made by Clark's. That's a great formula. Tighten the skin up and make it happen. All right, so you ready for this? Yes. Put your both your hands on the table. Okay. Okay. We NAPCA'd on this side, which is the hydrating mist or spray that I, we recommended yeah. for like post, like yeah. sun damage, right? So Jessica, when I was like 16, 17 years old, I used to go to like Paris when it was first open. And so I was competing in a bodybuilding show when I was 18. So I went out there and laid out every day to get tan, right? Uh-huh. So I went in the bathroom and washed my hands and you got a hair dryer type blower and thing blew so hard and like jellied my, my hands, right? Uh-huh. Like 20 some odd years later, I'm out there with my kid riding the bike. Shane, you met him today, right? Yeah. All right, so we're out riding bikes. He's a teenager. I go in there. I go, this is going to be cool. I go in there and just, poof, my skin didn't jelly anymore. Oh, it lost the elasticity yeah. and the hydration. So one thing we know is this with skin. You notice how slowly when I pull that up, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> so you notice how slowly that retracts back. It's yeah. a sign of aging skin. A lot of times people say to me, they go, how old are you? How old am I? I'll go, oh, yeah, you're like in your 30s because look how quickly your skin goes back. Uh huh. Okay, so I want you to watch this. Watch how much quicker it went back. Yeah. 
That's the NAPCA. Oh, wow. How it made such a significant difference. Watch that. Yeah, it does. Cool stuff. That's really cool stuff. Right? <laughs> I love it. Yes, that's awesome. All right. So that kind of wraps it up, gives us some tools to work with to help to prevent our sun, uh, sun damage skin. Yeah. Also help our skin. Start young. Protect yourself. Start, start young. Protect yourself. Yeah. Take the antioxidants. Come take to the Clark's nutrients, and uh, make it happen. Can find all these amazing items and products. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Starkey. Right, that was cool. an awesome episode. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you. All right. Thank you.